Can't the youth of Gaza have the same rights of free movement, the same rights to lead a normal life? And so we're outside the British Prime Minister's residence. He's apparently surfing in Cornwall. There's big waves, I hope he copes all right. I heard that, well done. <laughs> and uh, Britain is not just an innocent bystander in all this. Britain's complicity in this disaster for the Palestinian people goes back a long way. The secret and illegal Sykes-Picot agreement made in 1916 between a British and a French diplomat during the First World War, and we're commemorating the First World War now, was how to carve up the Ottoman Empire at the end. Who would have which bit? Which France would, which bit would go to France? Which would go to Britain? And then we got the Versailles Treaty. We got the denial of the legitimate national rights of so many peoples across the region. And we had the Balfour Declaration which made illogical promises unattainable, unattainable to two separate groups of people. And we're living with the consequences of that ever since. But think about it, how come Israel, a country of five million people, has managed to develop nuclear weapons? Yeah. It's an awfully small country to have those kind of resources to develop nuclear weapons. Where did the technology come from? America. Was it not the USA, France and yes. Britain? Was it not also support given by the then apartheid regime in South Africa that helped all that? And we have two billion pounds worth of arms deals over the past few years alone with Israel. And the British government, despite all our demands for suspension of the arms trade, as John Rees pointed out, has only said it would suspend 12 of the many licenses depending on the intensity of the fighting and the duration of the ceasefire. Search me as to what that means. My demand to our government is quite simple. Why do we have a military relationship with a country 
that abuses human rights, that is under investigation for war crimes, that has killed 2,000 people in the past month in Gaza, not to mention all the others that have been killed in Operation Cast Lead on all the other occasions. Stop all arms trade with Israel now! And stop, and stop the production of the equipment that helps to make the drone aircraft. And the European Union has a trade agreement with Israel. That, is, that trade agreement, like all of them, includes quite tough human rights clauses on no detention of children, for example, on no arrest and imprisonment without trial, for example, um, a number of other clauses in there, all of which have been breached, not to mention the breach of the Fourth Geneva Convention on Collective Punishment of the Palestinian People. Sorry, if any other country in the world had an EU trade agreement which include those human rights clauses, all of which have been in breach, I think something would be done about it. Yeah. Sanctions are being taken against Russia for what's happened in Ukraine. How come there's no sanctions against Israel for the bombardment of the people of God? But my friends, when we meet, when we march, when we demonstrate, people around the world hear it. That's the joy of social media. That's the joy of all the satellite channels. It matters to people in Gaza that we're here today. It matters to people in the refugee camps. It matters to people on the West Bank. And next Monday, Monday week, this Monday coming, the 1st of September, the British Parliament will... Free! 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 We're here today to remember the over 2,000 Palestinians that thanks to Palestinians in Gaza were exported from this country. We know that the British government has blood on its hands and we are calling for the British government to end the arms trade, end the sale of weapons to Israel and also to end the import of sales of weapons from Israel. Israel is one of the world's major exporters of arms. They do what is called as field testing. They field test those weapons on Palestinians in the West Bank and in Gaza. And then they sell them to the world saying those weapons are effective. Those weapons can kill people. And our government buys weapons from Israel. So we're calling for an end to the arms trade. That means an end to arms sales and an end to importing arms from Israel. We're here to remember those who've been killed by Israel. We're, that we're here to put a name to those who've been killed by Israel. And we've read out the names of the children before outside Downing Street. And I didn't think we'd have to do it again. But Israel broke, violated the ceasefire earlier this week. 2016 Palestinians had already died and more were being pulled out of the rubble. But Israel started its bombing again. So we're going to read the names of those who've been killed just since Tuesday, just this week. After those names are read, I'd like to ask everyone for a minute's silence to remember those people who've been killed this week and also all the Palestinians who have become martyrs in this struggle. We will not forget that they have been killed and we will continue the struggle until Palestine is free. As Allah said, inshallah, they will be the last names that we will have to read out. Thank you all for remembering them, and thank you all for your minute silence. We have another speaker, but before I take him, what I'd like to do is change the focus a bit Many of those whose names have been read out are children. We know that this war has been described as a war against children and that those children have been killed when they've been playing on the beach, 
they've been killed whilst playing in a children's playground, and they've been killed whilst taking shelter in UN schools. So what we have is the youngest person who... I